Hello my fellow Freedom Builders and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to look a bit at the overall market and I am going to dive into I think it is 13 or 14 stocks that both can be swing trading candidates on the US market or maybe a bit longer term candidates if you want uh, some longer term plays there. All right. Um, what I'm also going to do today is I'm going to show you some of the tools that I'm using. We are going to look at charts, but I'm also going to show you some of the underlying uh, chart tools that we have developed for ourselves. Those of you that are uh, subscribing customers in, in our Danish uh, subscription service, you might recognize some of them, but you will also see some new stuff that is uh, coming in the near future to you. So uh, you can look forward to that. All right. First of all, the US market is um, pretty much exploding up, where it has been taking a couple of weeks sideways, as you know, and then we had the Memorial Day long weekend here, and now it seems like we're just continuing up. Um, I'm not really sure why. Yes, I am. It is the Fed and so on, and people are hoping for uh, that the illness can go away, but there are some really uh, dire situations uh, in the companies around the world. So let's see if they, that will have an eff effect uh, sometimes. I have in many videos um, stated my concern about the economy and said I thought we were going to, to go down. But I have also bought up a lot of stocks. And uh, today I'm going to show you some of the tools that told me that it was time to buy up stocks, even though I disagreed. Uh, so sometimes that can be uh, mentally challenging to, to buy up stocks because your model tells you so. Uh, even though you think with your with your heart, with your feelings, that the market is going down. So let's have a look at it. Uh, first of all, uh, a quick introduction to the tools. We have in our weekly uh, report for our uh, subscribing customers in Denmark, we have, uh, well, we have a lot of, of, of PDF reports they're getting, but uh, what we're gonna look at today is our market index for the United States. And what we can see here is, that of the 40, 450 stocks that we are tracking right now, uh, we can see that 63% uh, of them are above their own 20 uh, day moving average, the SMA 20. 83% uh, are above their SMA 50 and 36% is above their SMA 200. That shows us, at least as long as the blue one in the middle here is above 50 to 55, that shows us that we have a good and solid upwards trend. And as you can see here, that has been going up from a low point. Uh, and what I'm looking for here is uh, if the market is in an overall positive trend. Uh, are more and more stocks getting above their long-term moving averages? And right now, it seems so. Uh, we might see that when we are getting this up around 85, 90, 95, that we see a retracement. But as long as we can see the long term, the 200 SMA, that that percentage is, is going up, then uh, I'm pretty confident that the bull market will simply just uh, keep running. So uh, that is uh, some of the overall valuations, more than just looking at the chart, which I, of course, also do. Then, when I am pretty confident that we are in an overall bull market with some, not just on the chart, but where also a lot of the stocks underneath the, the, the top 10 or the top 20 are actually also moving upwards, then I move into um, something new here, a new tool, uh, which is our sector uh, overview. And here we can see all of the sectors and we can see that if we're looking at all the stocks that is uh, within this sector, we can see that 71% uh, of, of these in the technology service is above their own 200 day moving average, 83 above their 50 and so on. And we have what is called the MTS relative strength measuring here, where we are measuring strength um, toward the other stocks. Uh, on one and three month scale. So what we do want to see is that these numbers should be fairly high. We want this uh, relative strength score to be uh, at least 50, but preferably above 60 as well. So we do have a number of sectors here that are quite interesting because they are moving upwards and we can see that uh, they're, they're getting more and more green, more and more of them are getting above their long-term moving averages. So when I'm saying today that, for instance, uh, a stock has a relative uh, score of uh, 73, then it is this uh, relative strength score towards all of the rest of the market I'm looking at. I'll also be mentioning, mentioning something called the 
Q score, and that is a score that we use in our weekly report. Um, and that can go from zero to 10. And what we're looking for is six or above. And that is a score I have uh, computed myself where we are looking at uh, some value factors, some growth factors, some earning quality factors and so on. And um, when we are buying above six in the Q score, we are getting good and solid companies. We don't need to do a lot more fundamental analysis of the stock then because we know we are not buying a complete car wreck here. Uh, of course, we can dive into the numbers and I do like to do that as well. But uh, this is just a, a, to get a quick glance at. Uh, maybe we're getting a good buy signal, but if the, the fundamentals are saying that this, or the, this company is pretty much broke, then we might sit that one at. All right, let's go to the charts and have a look at the candidates we're looking at here. And um, we are finding the US swing here. Now, um, one of the stocks or the first stock we have here is Albemarle. I think it is pronounced. I, I actually, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. But Albemarle has a Q score of 6.2. So that is uh, within the range we accept. It is a, a good quality company. It has a relative strength score of 55, which is also uh, fair enough, above the 50. And it is in the process industry. And when if we just quickly jump back here <clears throat> to the sectors, we can see that the process industry is here. Um, it's doing fairly well. The entire industry is at uh, 55 here. Th uh, that looks good. And uh, it is all of the uh, all of the percentages here are moving up. We can see that uh, we're going to 75, 87, 22. So all of them are looking good in an uptrend. So when we're looking at Albemarle here, we know that that the market is going up. We know that this specific sector is going up and we can actually even go down even further to see that it is in the uh, chemical specialty here. Let's just see here. And that also looks good. So now we are down at the sub sector of the industry here uh, and everything is actually looking as it should. So. When we are finding a stock that we think gives us a good signal, then uh, it is a good sign if also the market is going up, the sector, the sub sector, everything is going up and now we're getting a buy signal from the company. And you wouldn't say normally when you're looking at this that Albemarle is in a good uh, upward trend, but when we're looking at our sectors down here, uh, sorry, not our, our indicators down here, we can see that the RSI had popped up above 50 on our weekly chart. And the relative strength score is also in the positive, meaning that it is going up more than the entire market. Now, if we're looking at the daily chart here, it shows me something that I actually like a lot here. Ah, let's just adjust this one. Ah, we can do that later. Um, here, I do like to see these triangles that are broken up above, meaning that we have some buyers down here, then the sellers are getting in. The buyers are getting in earlier and earlier. The sellers are getting in earlier and earlier. And all of a sudden, the buyers are winning and this one pumps up to the upside. This usually is a good sign. Uh, I do like to see the stock above. It's 20 and 50 moving averages here. We can see that the RSI on, on the uh, is above 50 on the daily chart. And you could argue that with the big spike up yesterday, we might want to see a little retracement and then a move upwards. But Albemarle is a good stock, as I said, 6.2 uh, 6 in Q score. Uh, that is not too bad. And uh, this could be a very interesting uh, candidate, maybe for a quick swing to the upside or maybe for a longer term investment. All right, quickly on to the next one. Um, that is Clorox that I mentioned a while back. Uh, I actually think I had it in one of my videos when it retraced down here. As you can see, it is in a nice uh, uptrend. You could argue that it might have to retrace a bit and it, maybe it does. If we're looking at the daily chart, sorry, the daily chart here, uh, we can see that it has a tendency of retracing um, down here, it has done that several times. It has done it again now. And every time it just breaches the 50 line on the RSI, which is which it is doing again now. We could also take 
and uh, draw ourselves a little trend channel. Here we go. Uh, and we could easily draw a, a trend channel here uh, to see that it is actually a very well supported trend channel that we are at the bottom at right now. So here is a quick possible uh, swing trade you could take. Uh, for the longer term, well, it is 6.2 on the Q score, which is good and solid. And it has a 73 score in the relative strength score, which also means that it is, it is very strong on one and three month uh, price development compared with the rest of the market. Uh, it is in the consumer non-durables, which is also very strong right now. So uh, that is also a go uh, on this one. Let's have a look at the next one. Um, capital oil uh, is in the energy and minerals, which is actually not that strong right now, but it has gone in the green zone on the weekly chart. And we can see something uh, very nice. And that is we have broken up above a, a, a support or, or resistance area here that has been tested a couple of times. Um, it was actually rejected here as well. Then we broke up, had a retracement, and now it seems like we are bouncing up here. The RSI is going above 50. And when we are looking at the daily chart, um, as, I, as you know, I do like to, to break above the, the, the 20 SMA here. But if we can have some uh, good solid break, oh, sorry, good solid break of uh, this line here, um, that, and it keeps us up here for a couple of days, then I think capital oil can be quite an interesting play as well. All right, on to the next one, Equifax. Um, that is in the commercial services, and that is not the strongest of the uh, of, of of the sectors here. So it, it is a bit of a uh, it's a kind of in between. But it has seven point two in Q score, so it's very good and solid in the high end, and it has a seventy two in the uh, relative uh, relative strength rank. We are in green zone here. Uh, we are moving up, supported by the 20 SMA line here. Uh, we are above all the important moving averages. Um, you could argue that up here somewhere we might see some resistance, but uh, those of you that have followed me for a while know that just a single top like this is not really uh, something that worries me. You could choose this as a quick uh, scalp or swing up to around the, the 163 with maybe a 20 SMA as your stop line. Uh, but it is a good and solid company on the uh, on, on the numbers, so uh, it might actually be able to run a lot further. All right, another one that uh, showed up on my green zone uh, score list here is E-Trade, and um, when I saw it, I was actually not that impressed. Uh, it is in the green zone, so absolutely, uh, when you see here, I do like to see a good solid trend on the weekly chart, and I think we can agree that we don't see that one here. However, if some of you want uh, wanted for a, a quick uh, scalp here, then we have broken above this line. Uh, we have had a rising bottoms here uh, up two or three times here. We have this level that has broken up uh, above. And I think that just the momentum here could easily take it up uh, quite a lot, actually. But uh, it is in the finance sector, which is not impressive. Um, it has a Q score of 2.2, but when you're in, uh, sorry, 2.6, but when you're in the finance sector, the finance sector is not good with uh, the Q score. The Q score simply doesn't fit the, uh, the, the way the finance sector is, is set up. So I normally don't look at the uh, Q score when it comes to, to financial uh, companies. Uh, it has a relative strength score of 53. So this one, would, if I were to enter this one, and I won't, I'm pretty sure, I wouldn't be taking it for the long term. It would be a, a short term uh, trade uh, to, to get a quick run up here. But I think that is uh, possible to see. All right, on to a more solid company, and that is uh, Fastenal or Fastel. I'm not sure how it is pronounced. But here we can see a much more solid and well-defined uptrend. Of course, with some huge swings, yes, uh, but it is in the green zone, so everything is good. 
It is in the distribution services, which is a, a very good sale uh, service um, sector, the wholesale distributor. We have 6.6 in the Q score. We have an 88 in the relative strength score. So everything pretty much takes out. It has broken up above these uh, tops here. And uh, the RSI on a daily chart is above 50. We can see it has small retracement. It has taken a bit of a, uh, of a pause here for a couple of weeks. But it seems like it could be ready to pop up and uh, it is a good and solid company in a good and solid sector. So this might also be one you could hang on a bit longer. All right, on to Granger here, uh, 7.2 in Q score, 80 in relative strength score, nothing wrong there. Um, you wouldn't call this a good solid uptrend. Uh, we are in the green zone, but this is definitely a, a minus uh, here, but again, uh, I am seeing some interesting thing here, and it is pretty much the same as a, as we saw just a second ago. Uh, we have the, uh, the the top here that is flat, and then we have a, an upwards trending line here, uh, where the buyers are getting in earlier and earlier. It seems like the buyers are uh, hit by a bit of FOMO here, fear of missing out. So they're jumping in earlier and earlier not to miss out on the run out. Uh, run up here and then it broke uh, within the, the last week and this is a very uh, strong and solid formation after a long downturn we see the buyers are getting e eager to get in the sellers have a fixed point around 290 where, that they're selling at and all of a sudden the sellers run out of, of shares to sell or uh, they they might revert their positions and uh, we are seeing a, a break up here so that is very interesting the long-term trend is not amazing when we're looking at that, but uh, um, a bit of a shorter term here, but again, it's a very solid company. All right, next, Kansas City Southern here. Um, of course, we have broken the trend, but all, all in all, it is actually an okay trend, and then it was beaten down by the overall market here. Uh, if we take this anomaly out, uh, we would actually pretty much just have continued a good and solid uptrend. Um, we are in the green zone, 6.2 in Q score. We have 17 relative strength score. It is in transportation, which is not a strong sector right now. It might be moving up. Uh, this whole uh, um, railroad thing might be moving up when uh, the wheels are getting turning a bit more in, in the industry. Uh, again, what I noticed here was pretty much the exact same picture. Maybe not as clean, but this triangle formation that is broken to the to uh, to the upside, it is one of my favorite formations uh, to trade. And when I can do it in a good and solid company, uh, it is fair enough. Again, this would not be my first choice since the sector is not that uh, strong. On to microchip technology. Again, not a very solid uh, trend here. It had a very solid uh, trend when it was running here. But then everything was disturbed by uh, by this uh, crisis we have had, and now we are struggling to get back. So many of the trend formations in the coming time will be a bit disturbed by uh, by, by by this crash here, because that will have destroyed many of the patterns that, been, that we have been seeing. Six point two in Q score, sixty eight in relative strength score. Uh, it is in the electronic technologies uh, on the semiconductors, and that is not the strongest, but I have seen some movement uh, in there, and we are moving up on the daily chart, making new highs. Uh, the, uh, the RSI is keeping above 50, so I think this could actually be uh, an okay play uh, for the next couple of months here as well. All right, we have a few more left. We have uh, Metal Toledo here which is uh, in a strong uh, sector. It is a health tech sector, sector, which is one of the sectors that has really moved uh, lately. Uh, we have a, a 7.8 in the Q score, which is very solid. We have 7.3 in relative strength score, also very good. Um, you might argue that if we're looking at the long term uh, here, uh, that we might see some uh, very, very broad, uh, sorry, I'll just see if I can copy this one like here. Yes, uh, some very broad trend channel going down here. Uh, yes, we might. So we might consider the area up around 800 here to be a potential uh, resistance area here. We are on the green zone. 
uh, we are looking okay on the RSI down here and we have broken up above a number of tops here. Um, so we might consider on a daily chart, if we just look at that, uh, to say that we were interested in getting in, but that we wanted to uh, let it break here, have a retracement and then enter up here. I do like to play my stock safe, so this might not be my first choice, but it is a very good, very strong company. It is in a very strong sector. So uh, have a look at it, keep it on your watch list, and let's move on to the next. Here we have Pakar. Uh, again, one of these that have been on the long term moving a bit sideways here. You can see it was kind of a mess uh, all over the place here. We are in the green zone right now, and to be honest, uh, what I do like to see in a stock like this is that we have a lot of, as you can see here, we do have a lot of um, resistance here. We have a, a lot of areas that have been tested. And what I would like to see here before uh, eventually buying into this stock, I would again like to see this pattern. It has a 6.2 a 6 in Q score, 58 in uh, relative strength. It is in the uh, producer manufacturing sector, which is not the strongest. So that compared with this scenario, which looks a bit clunky here, um, this might not be my first choice uh, to take. Then we have a stock that I am certain that a lot of people from Denmark are looking at, also other people, but that is because uh, Teva is, uh, uh, have a Danish CEO, so that is one of the reasons why there's been a lot of focus here. And now this is interesting because Teva has been um, very much debated in Denmark. And uh, when, I, when we were up around 24, 22 here, I said that there was a definite uh, break to the downside and a break of a trend line, so I would not touch it. And I've been asked again and again and again all the way down if I wanted to touch it now, and I have said no. And what I've seen now is that if we draw a regression channel here, we have actually broken up, we've had our retracement, and now we are moving up again. Uh, the RSI are, uh, is, is looking fine here. Teva is a 6.2 in uh, Q score. It has a, 7 po a 78 in relative strength score, and it is in the very strong health technology sector. So I actually see that Teva could be a good winner this looks like a bottom formation. And to those of you that are Teva fans, I'm pretty sure that this is the start of a, of a long up move. I have no idea how long, and of course it can uh, turn back downwards again tomorrow. That's how it is with technical analysis. But I'm actually more positive on Teva now than I've been for a very, very long time. So that might be a candidate to consider uh, in a bit longer term. Two stocks left. We have Price T. Sorry, we have Price T Row. Why is it not coming? It is coming here. Price T Row groups here, and uh, again, one of these stocks that have actually been in a good and solid uptrend, and then it was the uptrend was completely uh, disrupted by the overall market crash, and this is why it is so important to also look at the overall market. Um, we got some. Ah, sorry. We got some uh, very uh, solid indication here, and we actually already got here in 25, 27. That might be time to get out. Uh, but now it is uh, forming a bottoming formation. We are in green zone again. It has 8.0. That is the highest for the candidates today. 8.0 in fundamental uh, Q score, which is amazing. Uh, 73 in the relative strength score. And uh, on the daily chart, it is showing some very good uh, solid swings here with new highs and new, uh, new higher highs and higher lows. Uh, the RSI is keeping well above 50 here. So this is one of the stocks I'm also looking into. The last one for today is uh, Veris anal uh, Analytics. Um, that is again in the finance uh, insurance business, which is quite a bad sector right now when we're looking at uh, at my uh, uh, sector analysis charts. It has 7.0 in the Q score, so that is great. 6.3 in the uh, in the relative strength score. Uh, and again, it is showing a good pattern. But then again, this would not be my first pick. I do like to see 
uh, now out of these 14 and you can make your own decisions because I'm not a financial uh, advisor so you should always make your own decisions but uh, what I do recommend is that you choose from the uh, the stock stocks from sectors that are the strongest so you want uh, you want some good graphical uh, charts here you want to see that the psychology is strong in the market you also like to see that it's okay of a fundamental stock except of course if you just want to be in for a few days or a week and so you want to see that it is uh, in a relatively strong sector and you want to see the market moving upwards so i do have as i said today i do have uh, some of these stocks four or five that are in uh, very um, very troubled sectors you could say uh, but you can look them through and uh, you can post the the, the video onwards uh, through it to to make your own analysis um, uh, during the the, uh, uh, the the break in the video and uh, then of course you are making your own decisions from your own analysis but this was just a little inspirational list and uh, a, a little look behind the scene as to how I also look at the trend strength and uh, the the sector strength so that's about it for now if you do have wishes for future stocks to be analyzed you can write them in the comment section below if you haven't done already remember to subscribe and like the video I'll talk to you again soon in the meantime take care of yourself and your money out there Bye for now.